It was just so glorious to get up and, and just walk outside, and it was like autumn. It was really nice just to walk, you know, you could like sit in the middle of a field and just like finish off a set of words, and just there'd be nothing to intrude. There's like no traffic, there's no people, there's no phones. It was just perfect, it was perfect isolation, really. The reason why we came down here to Miraville was um, because of its location, mainly, because it's really secluded, very isolated, and we just happened to be in France. And as soon as we were always recorded in England, we thought we'd make a nice change. It's really good because there's about 14, 15 of us here, all together, like friends and that, and it's just, um, it's just like a big family, really. It's more like an asylum than a recording studio at the moment. was one of those things, it was just like a bass line that I had and I was thinking this is a, like, a really sort of typical sort of funk bass line. I was just playing to Simon and Boris just joining in on, on the drums and I thought this would be really funny if we turned this into a song. And it's uh, so Paul came out and just started playing sort of chicken picking guitar and like within half an hour we had the song. So it's a lot of it sounds new and a lot of it is. It's like in, it, we've, we've gone into areas that we've never worked in before but at the same time it's taken a lot of elements that we've used over the years. It's just the actual flavour of some of the songs, like particularly some of the slower songs, um, like A Thousand Hours, would be a song that I'd really have loved to have written around the time of Faith. And it, you know, it was, it's because it encompasses like, an enormous slice of what I was feeling like at that time and how I still feel, but I think it's just, it's much more accomplished now. When we were going through them, we were actually just playing through before we started recording, we were very, very long and we would play for like half an hour so that you would know all the bits that you could do in it and sort of all the little tunes that there might be. And, um, so, I mean, the, it was, it was it's quite hard when you've got songs like that to decide how long they should be because I was always doing the vocals after the, the sort of, you know, I'd just be doing rough guide vocals. So I'd never know how emotional I was going to get and whether the intro should be long or whether I should come in hard to the start of the song and then have a long outro. A lot of it's like just gambling, really. Uh, we're on the very last song tonight. We'll finish it tonight. So, is there a new release date? And... Yeah, it's April the something. The album's going to be called Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. And the first single will probably be Why Can't I Be You or Catch. I haven't decided yet. I don't know. 18 songs? Yeah. Double LP? Yeah, although we haven't been in the studio for two years, well, 18 months until we made this, this last record. Just that we, um, but like the, the, the singles album filled the gap after the head in the door, which normally we would have been expected to consolidate our position and uh, come on by so we can make another head in the door. It's called the fuzzle with all the toe on the door. <laughs> toe on the window. So we, um, we just went and did, did very little last year, you know, we just played the concerts in France, made the film, we went to America and made the album, we did quite a lot, actually. This song's about how I used to wear a dress and travel on the train, it's called Push.
there was a very retrospective air about everything last year, and, and the group had reached the point with like the songs we were playing and the lineup as it was, and it was just the show that was head to end last year. And and I thought, well, it would be really nice just to capture it. Initially, it was just for our own benefit. We were going to film it, you know, just like a video, and just have it and say, you know, that 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 was me, you know. chose the runs to end the concerts and because that was the, the best looking place we, we only had like the one night if it went wrong it went wrong so and it did what you see is what you <laughs> get basically it didn't <laughs> stop being a duck impersonation <laughs> sorry you said it wasn't that easy to find people actually to make a film like that and was it always going to be tim pope to make it i don't know to do it yeah, yeah it, it it had to be him really for some if we'd just got a, a, a real film director, um, it would have been very bland, I think. It was like supposed to be a Cure film about the Cure, and perhaps known this for so long that... Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Just pretty yeah, right very, very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking very lucidly, very fluently, and you yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a long time. Go, go. A long time. What, do you want to nestle, do you want to nestle down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to have, we had to have Pat doing it because um, I don't think anyone else would really ha have understand. The, <laughs> no one else would have the front to be able to like. He runs across stage right, and he does it does a concert of very foolish things. <clears throat> it's just um, everything you see on television, like with regards to music video, is cack, and our cack is just funnier than most other people's. But um, it's only because. We always sit there and look at people being serious and laugh. 
So it's much better to look at someone being foolish and not laugh. Why? <laughs> okay, well. So is, is Pat the nickname you've got for uh, for Tim Pope? Yeah. Okay, now T- Tim Pope been involved in directing all of your videos for the last four years or so. In in the current video for uh, for Why Can't I Be You, he managed to get you dancing. Now, <laughs> how did he manage sort of. that? <laughs> we thought that it would be a good idea if we did a video which featured us in the five star sort of way. You know? We were very desperate for su- success with the new single. And uh, we had a very attractive lady came in to teach us how to dance. But she, unfortunately, she left before she managed to teach us. There's, um, there's no way I could ever learn to dance. You know, I mean, you can either dance or, or you can't when you're born. The rest of the group can dance, and I can't. It's just quite funny that I'm actually at the front. And Are you sure about that? The woman who was trying to teach us gave up, and she's like despairing. I think it's quite funny. How inept we were. <laughs> you, you look at uh, look at you in the video, and you're so obviously taking the dancing just so seriously. You had to. I mean, it was like we were guys desperately concentrating all the time, and I'm like one, two, one, two, three. You know, like, two, three, two, two, three. It's like. It would be stupid to complain because it, I keep saying it, it's so easy not to be successful that um, we just wouldn't do this if we didn't want to. We don't have It'd be stupid to, to sit here and go, ah, God, we have to do interviews all the time. We're stuck in the field and it's my birthday party. It'd be really stupid for me to say something like that. Why did you just say it then? Duh. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> 
A lot of it just depends on what, what we do at any given point. If we, we've done program, like television programs in Germany and we've been very tired and very belligerent and we've come across where it's more surly than, than we ever are normally, we're very drunk. distasteful, drunk and flippant a lot of the time. Six o'clock this morning, um, we finished making a film and we went to bed. And then we got up about 12 and then we went to... Um, where did we go? Oh yeah, we did some photos and an interview, and then we went to um, a television programme and we did a mime. And that's taken about six hours, because in between it all this like car rides and waiting. Are you ready? It's, yes, we're ready. OK, then we'll wait a bit more. That's what we do most of the time. But I mean, you, you live with, without recognition from, let's say, uh, you know, yes, the, the, the big audience, the big public, and, the and also the press. We'll talk about that later. But. The point of being a bit like curious isn't to to um, gain a big audience. You know, it's like it's come gradually because people have, have, have become aware of us and they like what we do. I mean, we've never done anything to, to persuade people that we're better than anyone else. That that sort of side of things is, is one that the media try and um, engender. They try and make. The, make people think that a group's only worth anything if a lot of people listen to it or buy the record, which isn't really true. Unfortunately, 99% of groups that are popular are, are absolute garbage because most people tend to like garbage. You know, I mean, we're an exception. That sounds very arrogant, but um, I can't understand why we're, why we're as popular as we are because everyone else that's popular in France is it's terrible. I mean, if you look at the top ten, anywhere in Europe, it's awful. I mean, the European top 50 is probably the 50 worst record in the whole world, so... And it doesn't say anything from the half about observation. Like that, yeah? Why is that? Why does that Because nobody has an occupation yeah. in England anymore. I'm We're really unemployed. <laughs> it's true. Then maybe this bit can be a bit more dancey if you wanted it to be. Alright, what, what do you think? What? Yeah, I see what they all look like. It depends how... Keep it, we always take it off. When they're all up there, what it looks like if it looks... Right, well, uh, you, you, have, you have it, what, with them all playing against the flute? Uh, yeah, to decide how much I'm going to do. Yeah, right, alright. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. But you, you have... I won't shoot this cl a closer, so it is more, yeah. for, more for shape. For us to do shapes. Could 
When we when we played the, the concerts in Europe and we finish at Christmas, I really don't know what we'll do. I'm quite tempted to stop for a while again, like we did in 1983, because that would be the most unexpected thing to, to do. You just back. been invited down and we suddenly decided to go and it was we weren't really expecting it to be well organized or anything we were expecting the worst it was very strange a lot of the time we didn't really know we were in South America I mean we couldn't go out anywhere or do anything but, um, we weren't prepared for it at all. We, we were actually booked into football stadiums. We were playing up to 40,000 people. Um, and we didn't know why. Oh, 
It's the first time I've ever felt famous, and it's awful. And it didn't like it at all. <laughs> we thought it was going to be quieter than yesterday, not very wrong. This is called a strange day. They oversold the concert, they printed more tickets than, than they could get in because they, they didn't think that everyone would, would turn up so they, put, they printed like about 15,000 extra tickets for everyone that came and of course they couldn't get in so they tried to, you know, they tried to burn the stadium down the second night. And they, it wasn't very much fun, I must admit, it was really, the second night was really scary because we, we were in the middle, there's nothing we could do and um, they brought in the army, you know, and, like tear gas and stuff, it was, it was very odd. It's a good concert, though. Give me eyes that I might see Fly around kissing my hand That's when we do in certain countries, but it's only there because it's it's manufactured. I always think there's this kind of manufactured hysteria which surrounds any group once you attain a certain level of success. <laughs> really when we started that, that any of us ever had this vision of what we would be doing in 10 years. I, I mean, I still don't now. I don't think of what I will be doing in 10 years. I don't think many people do. 
Um, if you're involved in anything creative, you can't really allow yourself to think about security, which is all thinking about the future is, really. Thinking if you're going to be in a better position or a worse position. Um, I always hoped that we'd be able to keep going until we wanted to stop, but I didn't know if that would be like 10 days or 10 years. Rapido stumbled upon Robert Smith wandering through the English countryside. Did he think The Cure were a natural part of the nation's musical scenery? I think it really that the English media does have a problem with, with a group like us because we don't fit in and we don't, and, and we don't go away. I mean, they, they just find us really irritating. I, I can understand why, because we've sort of disregarded everything and so we're still able to, to do what we want. Through our financial freedom, I suppose the fact that we, we've always used our own money and reinvested it in the group, we, we can take decisions on purely art, you know, on an artistic basis. It sounds like very contrived, but it, we can never be told to do anything. So when we make a record, it, it comes from somewhere else other than from the fact that we have to keep like a profile in our public visibility. <laughs> You have to be like the, the most dull person in the world to only listen to one type of music. So w what we do is just we do what we feel like. Um, obviously, like to, to someone who doesn't really like the Cure, we all now have returned back and reverted back to, to style. But it's not actually true. I and mean, we started off as a, as a really dumb pop group when we did Three Magic Boys and Boys Don't Cry. So if anything, we like if we're on a circle. We're about halfway round again. So. I'm actually trying to phase out playing guitar on this on this coming concert so that I can be a singer. But um, I'm still very very limited. I get very frustrated when I hear good singers. But um, no, it's it's just funny. It's such, such an embarrassing thing to do sing. Like, I couldn't sing now. I uh, jump in the river rather than sing. But if I'm sort of I don't know in a certain frame of mind and I'm singing songs, it's a release, I suppose.
atmosphere in the studio belies what's actually on the record. What about Marvelous Pride? You've got to have Marvelous Pride. But why? You've got to have Marvelous Pride, otherwise it don't stick the roof of your mouth. <laughs> we, we couldn't possibly be as upset as we are on the record all the time. It's almost like yeah. when we finish recording, there's like a release and we go the other way when we get really stupid. Wayne has to look old, It's very similar to roll out the barrel in a way, isn't it? Just one simple idea. Like that it's not like that, no, the other Simon. The other way. So. We've had like a very long ongoing relationship because I've actually been working with Roberts for about eight years, which I think must be a record actually. It must be the longest monogamous relationship. And then that's true between a, um, a video director and, or a filmmaker and, and a group because I think videos only really began in about 79, right? And, and then I started working with Robert in 81, which is about, nine, about eight years ago, which is ridiculous really. So anyway, that's interesting. But so, the, so in other words, very much the way we talk in answering your question is like, he goes, blah, 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 I go, blah, blah, and that's it. So that's how, that tends to be our sort of conversation. Basically, he tries to put, put us through as much hardship <laughs> and uh, pain as possible in his video. He tries to in, introduce an element of risk or danger into yeah. it. Like this time there's a bird eating spider that's going to be crawling all over Robert, you know. Your closet actor? I'm like, no, I, I really, really hate it. It's, um, it's the worst part of being in the group, being in the videos. I squirm. <laughs> this one's going to be literally right inside Robert's mouth. I like that, you know. How are you, how are you doing that? I've, well, I've got this thing called an endoscope, so I'm literally going to track the camera into Robert's mouth, so it should be fun. We don't, he doesn't know where it's been either. when we go in the studio, it'll be the last record we make. I mean, if I didn't think that, it would, they would never turn out right. Usually, if we're in the middle of doing something, I wish that this time next year I wasn't doing anything. If I'm not doing anything, I wish that this time next year we were doing something. So it's, a lot of it just depends on what time I got up that day.
The last four tours have been the last tour. <laughs> yeah, every tour is the last tour. enough in fact that Cure fans should get their tickets while they can. And the Cure will play the 1989 MTV Video Music Awards. The, the way that everything's tied up is, is really uh, it's disturbing I suppose.
the media is controlled by the same people, like the print media and the, and the visual media is controlled in the main by the same people who are controlling the record companies. It all goes back to parent groups and they create the, the, the kind of like the attention, they create the fuss and then they report on it. And the fact they're reporting on it makes it fuss and makes it, uh, it makes it a stir. These guys have been selling out stadiums all over America. This is their first U.S. television performance. Put your hands together for the cure. sounds really, really stupid because you're only in a group to get famous and stuff but um, some people aren't and, and, and again it's by default I mean a lot of people know us and I really like everyone listening to us and knowing about us but on a personal level I find it really difficult I mean this is a bit weird for me still even after the, this amount of time I just don't, don't feel comfortable and I never will and I'm, I'm sort of like past 30 now so I have to, I have to make a change I think 